In this video, I'm going to give you all of the knowledge that you need to ceramic coat your own car. If you've ever looked at a nice juicy hamburger in a fast food ad, and then look down at what you're actually served when you purchase it, the paint on the Model 3 is much the same way. The ingredients are there, the presentation just could be better, but you can take the ingredients and make it look like that cheeseburger in the ad or something like that. Uh, I think that analogy made more sense in my head. Okay, so the first step is to wash the car. And you're gonna wanna use a good quality soap to do this. I'm using snow foam from Chemical Guys and the two bucket system, as well as a washing wand and a foam cannon. So first step is to spray down the car with foam cannon. This will loosen up the surface dirt and make it less likely that you're gonna scratch the car more than it already is. Uh, that's the last thing that we want. So you're gonna cover the whole car with soap uh, before you move on to the next step, which is washing it. And you're gonna start at the top and work your way down because the bottom of the car is generally dirtier than the top. And in between each section, you're gonna wanna clean off your washing mitt or your washing wand so that you're not scraping the car with dirt that you've already picked up from the, the previous section. So once you're done washing the car, you should see that you have a lot of fine scratches, a lot of hazing, and even on a brand new car, because my car was washed by the Tesla service center before delivery, and they added swirl marks in that initial wash. So the next step is to clay bar the car. And the reason that we need to do this is that even on a brand new car that's just been washed, you're still going to have contaminants on the surface of the clear coat. And so we're going to spray on our detailer and we're gonna work in a circular motion over the entire surface of the car until it's as smooth as Uncle Rich's head. Polishing is one of the most important steps of the process. And so to do this, I'm going to be using Meguiar's M205 polishing compound. This is a light cutting compound. And I'm going to be using a Griot's Garage Random Orbital Polisher. This is the six inch version with a six inch orange cutting pad on it. And this is a light cutting compound and pad because we don't wanna take off any more clear coat than we absolutely have to. Good lighting is an absolute must. I'm using LED video lights as well as LED wands for seeing imperfections in the paint. Okay, so a word of warning here. Once you get your car under the bright LED lights, you're going to see every swirl mark, every scratch on the entire car, and you're not going to like what you see. Uh, it's kind of like turning on a black light in the back of an adult video store. So you wanna put your polish onto your cutting pad and then dab it around the area that you're going to be working in, and then spread it around before you turn on your polisher. Now you wanna work in sections that are about two feet by two feet, maybe three feet by three feet, and you're gonna work panel by panel all the way around the car. And after you've polished a section, you clean off your polish and you look at the reflection and you should see that there are no scratches. If there are still scratches visible, then you can go over that area again the amount that you need to polish is dependent on how many scratches you have and how long you've been polishing for. So experience counts here. The more that you do this, the more you are able to gauge how much polishing you need to do for each section. Now, once you're done, you should be able to bring your lights over the surface of the car and it should look perfect. It should look like a show car, should look like what you see in the promotional pictures that Tesla puts out for the Model 3. This is going to be as good as it gets, so you need to take your time here. The next steps are going to be sealing in and protecting all of the work that you've done up until this point. So now we have to prep the surface of the car for the ceramic coating. And so we're going to be using Geon Prep to do this. And the reason that we need to do this is after you've polished, there's still going to be oils and other contaminants from the polishing process on the surface. So we need to wipe down the whole surface of the car with prep, and this will make it so that we're ready to put on the coating. At this point, we're ready to coat the car. First, I'm going to do an unboxing of the ceramic coating that I used, which is 
Gion Moe's uh, ceramic coating, and I got this on Amazon. It was about $120 for the set, which is a little bit pricey, but it's still less expensive than if you paid a professional detailer to do this. So let's look in here. We have a bottle of Cure, and so that's hydrophobic coating, and then a bunch of microfiber application cloths, and then the foam block, um, let me get this, foam block in here uh, that the claws go over when you're applying the product. And then we have a little dipper to put it onto the cloth. Um, and then the actual ceramic coating. Uh, yep, there you go. And uh, let's see, instruction manual. Yep, got to read that. And what else? Okay, looks like, okay, sticker. This was protected using Gion. Yeah, whatever. I'm not putting that on my car. Um, and another sticker, hologram thing. Okay, so Cure. This is a hydrophobic coating and spray sealant. And you put this on after you put on the ceramic coating. And then you have your ceramic coating and it's very hard and durable and all that stuff. At least that's what it says on the bottle. Um, so this will protect your car and it kind of works like a layer of Teflon over the surface of your car, keeping contaminants off. So applying it, you're going to wrap your microfiber towel over your foam block, and then you're going to put the product in a straight line across your microfiber towel. And then when you're working it in, the way that you do this is you work one direction, line by line, trying to keep it smooth and level. And then once you're done with that two foot section, you're going to, it's, you do this in two foot by two foot sections. And so you're going to head the opposite direction. You're going to do a hatch pattern. So you do horizontally, and then you do vertically up the car where you've already crossed over on the horizontal section. And so you only put this on there for like 30 seconds. And after you've, you've done that 30 seconds, you go and you wipe it off immediately because it flashes and having it on there for too long isn't good. So put it on two foot by two foot sections and then in a cross pattern and then wipe it off right away. And then you work around the entire car until everything is coated with the ceramic coating. Now you should see your car is very shiny. The coating is on, but we can't actually let the car leave the garage for 24 hours. And that's the hardest part of the whole coating process is keeping your car under wraps for the time to prep it, the time to apply the coating, and then also the time for the coating to cure before you can pull it out of the garage. Okay, so now we need to apply the top coat. And what the top coat does is protects the ceramic coating from getting water spots while it's curing. And it's a hydrophobic coating which will make the water bead off and help protect against those water spots. Now the way that you apply it is you spray it onto the rag, not the surface, and then you wipe it over the panel, panel by panel, and you wipe off the excess after you're done. Now after this step, given it's been the 24 hours, you should be ready to drive your car. Finally you're done, and wow, the results are going to speak for themselves, and you're gonna feel great about the work that you've put into your car, and you get to enjoy all of that effort every time you look at it.